Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Steven Ellistad. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media. So in a previous tutorial last month, I had taken a look at using Logic's paintbrush tool to paint out rhythm parts and to modify and shape them in a quick and fairly intuitive manner with that tool. And in that tutorial, I had actually promised to come back and look at that in a melodic sense as well. So I wanted to take some time today and demonstrate that. So I've loaded up a basic simple analog lead inside of RetroSynth. So I had this assigned to the pencil, but there's a number of different tools and ones that are different from the tools that we have up here. So we have our pointer and I have my marquee select because I like to be able to come in here, drop my playhead, split regions, all kinds of stuff. But in the piano roll, I'm going to actually assign this to my brush tool. So the brush tool is a little bit different. And as we talked about in the previous video, which I suggest you check out on ADSR YouTube if you haven't seen it already, we can come in here and write according to our snap and our time quantize. And so currently I have it set to sixteenths and it's writing to sixteenths. And it's still going to stay on sixteenths because my time quantize is set to that. But if I change my time quantize to quarter notes, then we see that half notes, etc. So it's just some basic rhythmic control over what the brush tool is doing. And a lot of times I'll actually set my snap to as time quantized. So it'll follow the behavior of whatever setting I set up over here. And so that's all well and good. Let's zoom in a little bit and come down maybe to a lower octave. And so it's cool to be able to write some parts out like that, but at the same time, it'd be nice to have some more melodic control over what's happening there. And that is just as simple as turning on your scale quantize. And so we can say major natural minor chromatic, which we already have, uh, major slash minor, uh, major plus a flat seven, a harmonic minor, melodic minor, pentatonics, and then we get into klezmer, Japanese, Southeast Asian, all kinds of cool stuff, and a bunch of different modes. In this case, let's see what this Japanese scale is all about. But I need to choose a particular root note and so I said E Japanese. And now if I hold my brush down, I can only play notes that are in that particular scale. So if I choose instead, say harmonic minor, let's come up a little bit. Only the notes that are available in that scale are available to me to write with. And if I want to change the duration, and the advantage of having this on the command click tool is that once I've written, I just literally let off of the command key and I can adjust my notes by say adjusting my uh, grid level and or my snap. So both those allow us different points of control. One other thing to, to bear in mind here is we have this snap notes to absolute versus relative value. And that's a good one to pay attention to. So what happens with absolute value is it's going to specifically always be on the very start of the bar or the top subdivision of whatever we've chosen. If we chose relative value, and if I record a part, Now those aren't necessarily going to be specifically in time. So let me zoom in a little bit here. Now it's snapping to 16th notes, but it's snapping relative. So by whatever offset, we can see in fact, this is a little behind the beat. And if I drag it, it's automatically snapping. I can even option drag it to make a copy. And we can see that it's offset by the exact same amount. The most important thing about the paintbrush is again, we need to pay attention to our quantize, whether we want it to be swinging or in a particular triplet feel, a tuplet feel, or just quantize to a particular note. And then if we wanna make sure that it's stuck to a particular scale, so instead of let's say melodic minor, And just like that, we've got a nice, clean, and simple part. 
And if we wanted to instead maybe modify that, we could also, once we've got a part written that we like, literally switch it to quantize to a particular scale off of that. So this gives us the opportunity to maybe come in here and try to write, here's my marquee select tool to split these up into some different regions and maybe come in here and try some different parts just by writing them. Maybe try a different time division. And just come through here with different maybe time, time subdivisions and try some different scales, what have you. And just brainstorming some parts. That sounds a little avant-garde, but we can change this scale to find something that's more suitable, perhaps. Mixolydian. And one thing it does is it gives you the opportunity to try some basic, maybe visual motifs in the piano roll, some, some lengths and durations, some rise and flow of notes and pitches. And then at the same time, maybe come in here and then map them to a particular scale. But the brush tool is a great way to get started with that. Again, I'll often come in here with, if I know that I want it to be kind of, you know. And so a lot of that's junk because it's not worth playing with. But I get some cool little sweeps and motifs in there. So maybe I can delete a couple of those and then come in here with, say, 16th notes in that same scale. You get the sense of how we can do this. And just some interesting ways to approach writing and laying out piano roll parts using the brush tool along with the scale quantize functions. And so bear in mind that the brush tool works independently of scale quantize or of time quantize. And each of these also work independently of the brush. So you can certainly come in here and perform a part. And if you decide you don't like that, maybe instead we can try to put it in a harmonic minor. Or the minor pentatonic. So there's a lot of ways we can use all these different tools together, but the brush tool as a uh, writing or drafting idea, Lots of ways to explore, and whether you're familiar with scales or not, the brush tool is a great way to jumpstart some creativity and rapidly lay out some parts. Just like that. So I hope you found that useful and can use that to jumpstart some of your own creative ideas inside of Logic Pro X. I'm Stephen Ellisdeff for ADSR. Thanks for checking this out. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel, follow on social media, and we'll see you next time. Take care.